Hello everyone, Frank DeMore here from the End Times Research Ministry. Thanks for coming again to my YouTube channel where I'm continually connecting the dots between Bible prophecy and current events. So let me go right into it. Today is June 10th, 2014. Now, earlier today I posted some information about Israel being targeted. And then later on, after I made a post, I came across this article. And I wanted to share this information with you because it's definitely important. And considering the fact that Iran is involved in a major war against Israel in Ezekiel chapter 38, of which I talked about on my post today, I wanted to bring this news to you. Now, I guess what I should do is first give you the headline and then show you what I've been warning over the past five years and going on six, almost six years now. The headline from this article, Meeting Privately with the U.S., Iran Suggests More Time for Nuclear Talks. I'm going to go and play a part of a video that I made. The video was only seven minutes long, but I'm just going to play a little segment of it for one of my warnings when I told you what was going to happen with the talks about stopping the Iranians from getting a nuclear bomb. Now, if you want to do a Google search or just put in Iran will never stop their quest for a nuclear bomb because this is what I've been warning about. Now, in the video that I made at the 1 minute 46 second mark into the video, I give you some information. I give you a warning about the future. Let me warn you again, like I've been warning you for the past five years. There is not going to be in the news where the Iranians give up their nuclear program. It's not going to happen. Iran is working to get a bomb to use against Israel. Flat out, might as well put that in the back of your mind. Now, what I want to show you is this. I've been warning you what is going to happen. Now, in one of my videos, and of course, I've been warning this. It's all over my website, both in my older prophecy uh, website, the BibleProphecyMan.com website, and the End Times Research Ministry uh, website that you can get to, and uh, I'll give you that address right now, as you can see it coming on the screen. But I want to give you one of my warnings about what is going to happen, and I believe that this warning came in 2013. Let me just play it. Now, here's one from January the 29th of 2009. Scroll down, and you'll see it right here in the covered in the blue. Here are the facts Israel is running out of time to deal with Iran's surge in obtaining a nuclear bomb. And for the past two years, the Israeli officials have warned that they will take out Iran's nuclear site if the UN cannot get them to halt their production. At the same time, Israel is warning Iran. Iran comes back and says, We will never stop the nuclear program. Let me add. These facts, if you are new to my site, you may not know this, and you should. Israel warned Iraq and Syria about their nuclear ambitions just the way they are now warning Iran. And Israel bombed both Iraq and Syria's nuclear site and put an end to their quest for maintaining a nuclear bomb. What would make you think Israel won't carry out their word that they will destroy Iran's site? Now, that was just one of my... All right, so I'm going to stop it there and go back to my site now. And I want to, again, go to this article that you saw the meeting privately with the U.S. and Iran, obviously. They're getting together talking about the, uh, the nuclear weapon, or at least a quest for a nuclear energy that the Iranians are saying, but they're actually going to try to use this energy to wipe out Israel. So let me go over to this article, I'll go right to the source. You see this article is from the Jerusalem Post. The Islamic Republic says negotiations over its disputed nuclear program may need to be extended by six months if, if July 20 deadline is not met. Now, just like I warned five years ago, I said, I don't care how many times they sit down, they are never going to stop their quest to get a nuclear bomb. 
So, according to this article, it says the senior American and Iranian officials spent over five hours together in private meetings in Geneva on Monday, jointly seeking a path forward in negotiations over Iran's nuclear program only six weeks before the self-imposed deadline on the talks aimed at ending the crisis. At the bilateral meeting, and in quotes placed in state-run Iranian media, Islamic Republic officials suggested world powers may have no choice but to extend the negotiations past the July 20th deadline. And talks have stalled over specific Western requests of Iran to dismantle key components of its vast nuclear infrastructure. So here what we have is the United States taking the bait. And over the past five years, Barack Obama has done this consistently, giving the Iranians more time to get their hands on a bomb that the Iranians no doubt will try to use against Israel. And you can see for yourself that the present administration will continue to do the same exact thing. They're not going to enforce Iran to stop their nuclear bomb. There's got to be no military action unless it comes, I believe, unless it comes straight from Israel because Israel's the one that's being jeopardized by this bomb that they're going to be making in the near future. As soon as they got enough uranium in the materials that they need for a nuclear weapon, there is no doubt in my mind they will use it. Israel knows that. So all we're seeing is the same thing that we saw five years ago, giving the Iranians more time. Now let me go to another article that talks about this. And this article says the U.S. military base within Iranian striking distance official warns. Now keep in mind, the United States is sitting down with the Iranians. There's supposed to be talks, right? But none of these talks are going to be going anywhere. And let me show you what one of the people says who is has influence, or her name is Clary, Clary Lopez, Center of Security Policy. Let me just scroll all the way down here and show you what was said. Now here is Lopez. I'm going to go up here a little bit and read from here first. It says the U.S. raised the possibility of limiting Iran's missile program as part of the talks two months ago, prompting Supreme Leader Hayat al Khamenei to say, to say it would be stupid and idiotic to expect Iran to comply. In other words, they don't really believe. Here's some people of high influence in the American government, and they're saying that the Iranians aren't going to comply here. Now, subsequently, he ordered that Tehran's defense contractors to increase productions of the missiles, according to reports. The U.S. appears to have scrapped the idea of limiting Iran's missile capabilities, with Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel stating that the P P5 plus 1 is focused only on Iran's nuclear program. All right, so we're talking about the nuclear program. This is the latest threat coming even as negotiations proceed is part of Iran's long history of duplicity, said Lopez. They are not negotiating and never have negotiated in good faith, she said. Finally, somebody is saying the exact thing I've been warning about for the past five years. They are taking us, get this, for fools. You better believe it. The Obama administration is playing the United States. And it's very, very dangerous when you're talking about nuclear capabilities that will be launched on supposedly America's best ally, Israel. Israel has been targeted. I talked about this earlier today in my post. I wrote extensively about that. Please read my post today. But the Iranians definitely are taking the United States as fools, and some of our high officials know it. Their nuke program at home continues apace, and whatever is being said in Geneva is irrelevant. As for the threat, Lopez said the U.S. should listen. It's a little foolish not to take seriously a country that not only continuously threatens genocide, there you go, against Israel. Now you know who is being said here, where it's directed towards Israel, but the U.S. as well all while developing the means to carry out the threat, she said. So in other words, 
Status quo. Israel is in harm's way. America is doing nothing about it. All they're doing is giving more time. Now, where is this going to lead? Well, obviously, it's going to end up with a conflict because Israel is not going to allow the Iranians to finish their uh, developing of a capability network of either delivering those missiles or getting the fuel, the right fuel, to be able to arm a nuclear weapon. There's going to be conflict before that day ever comes. And I believe that that conflict could set off the Psalm 83 war. If Israel goes in there, like I believe that they will, I believe that the nations who see that they struck at an ally, Iran's ally, the nations who are allied with Iran, like Syria, Lebanon, the Palestinians, the Hamas, the Fatah, and the Hezbollah, they probably will take revenge and try to take out Israel. A lot of scenarios possible that starts the Psalm 83 war, and that could be one of the scenarios. So the bottom line is this, again, I'm going to warn you, don't expect the Iranians to stop anytime soon and listen to Barack Obama. Because all Barack Obama is doing is giving them the full deck, including all four aces. Israel knows it. There's going to be a conflict. Now, as for Iran's future, we know what's going to happen to Iran. And for those of you who may not know, let's take a look. This is a map of the Ezekiel chapter 38. 39 war. In the Old Testament, Ezekiel talks about an attack that is going to come in the latter days. In other words, the days of this generation, the end times. And this attack will be from the northern quarters. That's what it says in Ezekiel chapter 38. We also see it in Ezekiel 39. But we do know that the allies who come with Russia, who will actually lead this war against Israel, the main, one of the main allies is Iran. Iran will be coming down against Israel to try to take her out. With, obviously, I talk about in my post today, East Germany and Libya and other nations like Turkey. And, and you also see Armenia. Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Afghanistan, some of the other, Sudan. And we see a host of nations coming down, led by Russia. But all of them are going to get wiped out. The invading armies that come down are going to be leveled. Five-sixths, we are told, are going to be killed in that battle. The Israeli army is not going to have to fight this battle because in this battle is when God shows up and he's going to sanctify his name in this war. He's chosen a special day to complete this war. If you read Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, you'll find that out. A special day. It's in the future. It is coming up very, very quickly. So Iran's future, unless they turn away from their hatred towards the Israelis and trying to wipe them out, They'll remain under the curse found in Genesis chapter 12. And this is a bad position to be in against the Lord. But as we see from prophecy, there's no doubt that it looks like they're never going to change because they will be led down into this battle and they will be defeated. Now, if you don't believe this, all I could say is watch the news. Stay with me. Keep on the watch, because in the near future, you're going to see some events in this generation that will signify we're at the end. Those wars will be the Psalm 83 war, the Ezekiel chapter 38 war, and then the rebuilding of the Jewish temple. And all of these signs are preludes to bringing on the Antichrist. I'm praying that somebody out there is paying attention because Jesus should be taken seriously. He loves everyone. He doesn't want anybody to perish, but he's given everybody the free will. And he's given us enough information so that we know that he is the truth. His word is the truth and everything that he said is going to come to pass. I'm praying that you will receive it.